Welcome back, folks. As promised, here is part two coming at you of a two-part series on... On, um... St Gee, it's been a week. Um... This is on... Well, whatever it's on, it's coming up next. I'm gonna just... Get Five. Use your clothes. What do I mean by that? I have no idea. No, I do. Because that'd be weird otherwise to... Offer up an idea and not really have an idea of what your idea is. If you have extra technical clothing, sometimes along the way, if you're like me, you might stop into a gear store and buy a, a shirt that you like, or another pair of socks. Oh my god. This last shit. Well, you're going to see all about it when I edit my trip and put it up there. It's going to happen, folks. Eventually it'll make it. It's just there's so much footage. But... Yeah, my socks failed. That said, I was buying new socks at the Cathlon or a new shirt here and there as I needed if I was losing weight. It doesn't matter. I had extra gear. If you have extra technical clothing on you, an extra shirt again, or an extra pair of socks, you can use them. However, keep this in mind. Technical clothing, like merino wool, uh, synthetics, they have wicking capabilities. I'm sure you're aware of this by now if you're doing any research at all, aside or outside of my channel. Even on my channel, you know this. It's often unidirectional, that material. So turn it inside out. Turn the shirt inside out because you want to stuff that part into your shoe. You know what I'm saying? So the exposed outside of the fabric that will suck in, if it was a shirt, it would be sucking out. But now that it's inside, you know what I'm saying? You know, is that confusing? That's confusing. But stick that in your shoe. If it's a shirt, you have enough material, in theory, for both shoes. So do that. If you have an extra sock, again, inside out, especially if it's wool. Wool ones actually are the best. So if you have socks and you have an extra that you haven't used yet, keep that in mind. You can use them instead of newspaper. If you don't have any newspaper, you don't have a hairdryer, you don't have a fan, inside out, inside the shoe, lying like flat inside the shoe. You want it to cover as much surface area as possible, but that will pull out the moisture. Tip six, feel great and elevate. That's just the word I'm title right now for this tip. But tip six, elevate it. The shoe by now is completely stripped. The laces are off. The tongue is out. It's like a, like a panting dog. Your poor shoe. But elevate it. Elevate it either on a clothesline, outside, inside. What I find really works really good, especially if it stopped raining, actually only if it stopped raining, is the windowsill ledge of the dorm. If you can get that open, that window open, or if you're in a private room, and if there's a ledge out there, Put your shoes out there. That moving air, the wind, the breeze, that'll aid in drying them faster. Unless it's a super, super humid day out there, which it might be. But it's better than, well, if it's only you in the room, it's better than being out there in the moving air. They'll dry faster. However, however, yeah, secure them. If you do have a lace handy, put it through one of the loops and tie it around something so that if a heavy wind comes by, what I do actually is I use my clothesline and weave it through the shoe because I'm typically drying socks out there too or whatever other clothes off the window ledge because crazy like that. So securing them will keep not only keep them there if, if a heavy wind hits them, but also if you hit them. I've opened up windows the other way and pushed stuff off. Off. Yeah, off the ledge onto pilgrims standing below. Unsuspecting pilgrims standing below. I mean, it intentionally. Yeah, there's a part of me that did that intentionally. Maybe it was this part, or maybe it was this part. I don't know what I'm doing anymore. anymore. But yes, so secure them if you do. Tip seven. Tip seven is the dorm. If you're in a dorm, take advantage of that. Yeah, I know, we complain. Dorms, especially if there's a lot of people in there, it could be sweaty and hot. No one likes a full albergue. You like a little space. But you can take that lemon of a situation and turn it into lemon juice or something like that. What I mean by that is, you know, it's even better if there's like only one window. Body heat. Body heat is like the, the secret sauce when it comes to drying clothes. Especially if it's still wet outside. Especially if the shoe rack is outside. Never understood that. I think the best place for a shoe rack is inside the dorm. Just, I mean, the smell and I mean, people might argue about that. But 
maybe have a okay wet day shurek inside the dorm dry day shurek outside the dorm and if it's dry yeah sure they can, they can live outside for the day or the night but if it's raining it'd be nice to have a place inside the dorms because the body heat will dry everything that's it this works for clothes too but clothes if you have wet clothes aren't dry yet hang a string across your bunk and clothes pin your socks your underwear whatever there and by morning that stuff will be dry i promise you the more bodies there the better they will dry fast don't ever think they won't. If you have to up between leaving yourself outside to dry or outside the room and another room to dry, bring them in the dorm. They are guaranteed to dry in there before they are outside. I'm, I'm telling you, every time. Tip eight. And this one is truly great. That was dumb. This is getting... I'm not used to doing these numbered tip things, but this one's a doozy, folks. This is my hack. This is the first hack coming at you. Like, seriously, it's a real hack. It's a black hack. Or a flax hack, if you will. This one is kind of, this has got multi-uses. You know, when it comes to the Camino, you want to get the most out of your cure. And this is one, especially when it comes to DIY Camino hack. This one you're going to get a lot of use out of. And you'll thank me once more if you have to use this one. But it's, I call it the flax sack. It's, again, I have a lot of working titles that you could come up with something better than that. That was pretty good, though. Flax sack. Flax, actually, in like a beanbag setting in a bag... An all-natural material bag like bamboo, hemp, cotton. These do really well in the microwave. See where this is going? So you create a bean bag full with flax. It's as simple as that. What I like to do is recycle old clothing like um, merino wool especially because you want a wicking material. So that's another great thing about this natural material is it, it works well in the microwave. It'll survive the microwave. That said, make sure you stitch it with natural thread as well made out of wool or cotton something like that not something synthetic that might have a bad time in the microwave fill that with flax not too much remember you're packing this stuff and everything you pack is more weight so small like bean bag size that would fit in the palm of your hand sacks of flax and flax will stay warm to 30 to 45 minutes put in the microwave for one one or two minutes depending on the microwave setting and yeah that'll stay warm for that amount of time so if it's a a muggy, humid, wet, cold day out there, and there's no heat source at all, this will definitely help. And you, maybe you can do it a couple times, like after the first half an hour, nuke them again in the microwave, if there's a microwave. If there's no microwave, you can preheat them about 200 degrees. If you're cooking already, piggyback on that, and you can put them in the oven, wrap them in tin foil, and just heat them up. But if there's a microwave, even better, like one or two minutes. Otherwise, it'd be a very arduous process. But you're out for it, right? You want these shoes dry. So yeah, they'll retain heat. Do that a couple times, they'll be dry in the morning. Especially if you're using wicking material, recycled wicking material to make this happen. So get the most out of your clothes. Upcycle those old pair of wool socks. Now you could put a liner in there too, but the less material, I mean, you wanna keep it simple, but a liner would make these last longer. Another great thing about these DIY flax sacks is if you're not using them to dry your shoes, you can also use them as hand warmers on a cold morning. If there's a microwave there, if you're staying in a private room where there's a microwave or you have access to a microwave, one or two minutes in there will keep your hands warm for that first half an hour on the trail. You can also use, wait for it, eye pillows. They're already made. You don't have to do anything. Well, you might want to do something. These are kind of bulky. They weigh a lot, but they probably fit right in your shoe. They're like the perfect size for your shoe. So you could get lazy and just buy one of these bad boys. This is filled with flex. Sometimes it's filled with lavender or other like rosemary or peppermint. So that's great in a shoe too. You can, you know, and you can be the best smelling shoes there. What I would recommend though is probably just taking this and hand it, cutting it in half, and then hand sewing each one to its own separate little square and emptying out some of the flax because these are pretty beefy. You don't need that much. You don't want to carry so much with you, especially if you, and that goes for if you're using, you decide to take two of these, just take out some of the flax, make them a little bit thinner. But yeah, you would just sit this in your shoe, covering as much surface area as possible. The wicking, the moisture wicking material that you use is going to aid in sucking up the moisture. And the heat that this provides is going to aid in drying and evaporating a lot of that moisture. So, right? Super, super hack. Flax sack. Flax sack. Flax sack. If you get a better name, let me know. But that one works really, really, really well. Tip Chan! We made it, folks. I didn't think we were going to. But we did. Let's do that glass thing. Ooh. How does he do it? Like Spider-Man. Spider-Man. Ah, okay. Anyways, this one, folks. This is my favorite one. This is the one I use. Again, there's not always newspaper there. And while buying it is one thing, 
you know, it'd be nice to just have something you could depend on. And this is it. Microfiber cloth. A microfiber cloth is so much better than newspaper. While newspaper, again, is the old, it's the, the classic old school technique for drying a shoe, which does work, but it only holds one time its weight in water because newspaper is made to read and not to absorb water. <gasps> Obvious, right? This, however, is microfiber, and this is designed to absorb water and hold seven to eight times its own weight in moisture. Wait, wait. this one is actually um, suede microfiber that I've been using. This dries my shoes on the humidest of New England days in five hours. I've tested this probably five times so far, so I recommend suede microfiber if you're going to buy it, or maybe you can find it. This was an old seat cover in my Jeep, so reuse if you can. You don't need to spend money, I guess, is what I'm trying to say, to get the results. Again, reusable. So after I'm done using it, if the day is, turns into a good day and I can dangle this off my bag and let them dry to be used again on the next rainy day, I don't have to rely on newspaper anymore. And this is like, it's like 14 inches by 42 inches. This will fit in the shoe nice and snug and it covers all of the surface area in there. And this works. This works really. You don't, you don't have to change it. Just leave it in there all night or just leave it in there for a few hours. Five hours later, I guarantee your shoes will be dry. This stuff is magical. You can also, you know, sew on a loop or cut a hole in it, put a carabiner through this, just to make it easier to clip onto your backpack to dry out the fact. However, if you're walking through a lot of days of rain, you can't dangle this off your backpack because it won't dry. It'll just get rained on and do what it's designed to do. In that case, keep it in the dry bag or keep it in a Ziploc until you have a chance to dry this. I'm telling you, this is my pro tip. When deciding, should I bring my flax sack or this i will always bring this first just because it packs down so small it's so light you barely notice it's there with a flax sack i mean now you're adding flax which it's negligible really the weight but they do take up a little bit more space due to the flax so microfiber cloth and then you can also use those car wash and chamois too but i'm telling you, the suede one i found does do the job better old hiking towels old camping towels too the microfiber ones you can use those also you could also just use those. If you're not showering that night or being that night and it's worth having dry shoes the next day, you could use your camping or hiking towel. It is microfiber. Don't use a regular towel. But if that's all you have, it's better than nothing. And now, as emptied at, as teased out, the bonus tip. Take it! Future me. It'll do this in the bar. Let's go to the bar! Let's go to the bonus! Let's go to the bonus! Let's get a barn bonus tip for me in the barn. Go. Barn bonus tips. Tip. It's just a tip. Or is it? Or is it? Let's find out. Are you ready for your bonus tip? Check it out. Okay. Now this can be combined with the microfiber or without. But I call it the, well... But it's the Nalgene bottle boiling water trick. That's right, folks. If you get to an albergue that pretty much doesn't have a whole bunch uh, of options, maybe there's no fire. I swear I'm getting shot at here all the time. No fire, no radiator, no microwave even. And maybe you opted out of the flax sacks. I don't blame you. But they are cool, aren't they? They make great hand warmers any time of year. So what you will need is at least access to a stove. If, if all you have is a stove, this is wonderful. Boil water, so you're gonna need a pot too. Boil the water, and when it's done boiling, pour it into your Nalgene. Now Nalgene can withstand boiling water. Same thing with stainless steel water bottles and BPA-free plastic water bottles. So keep that in mind. Those can handle boiling water. Your regular, everyday, one-time use spring bottle water, not so much. Those are great for cold water and reusing in that sense, but not for this trick. Anyways, you pour the boiling water into preferably a Nalgene. If it's a 32 ounce or larger, that's great. You're gonna have to wedge it between your shoes. Not necessarily wedge it, but have it between your shoes and your shoes lying on their sides around it. Now you can create a total dry chamber or a drying chamber by just draping your microfiber or one of your microfiber cloths or even your towel over this and I'll let it dry for, well, up to four to six hours. That's right, folks. Boiling water in an algae bottle can stay hot or warm up to, let's see, three to four hours. 
But if you use the drying chamber, it can stay warmer even longer, up to four to six hours. So yeah, you can use those microfiber towels or use it right, your regular towel if it's dry. Don't use your damp or wet towel. Otherwise that totally like, you know, kills what we're trying to do here. Maybe you brought two smaller Nalgene balls that look like this. If you did, that's pretty awesome. Those will fit in your shoes or most likely your shoes, depending on the size of your shoes. But those are closer to fitting your shoes rather than a larger Nalgene bottle. So if you have one, two of those, which might be another reason why to get two of those. Some people like to wear two water bottles up front or two in the back. It's actually kind of perfect for this as well. So you have one for each shoe, but you'll thank me later, folks. You will thank me later. And you'll blow some minds too. No one's seen this one before. Bonus tip. So there you have it, folks. Epic hacks, tips, tricks, strategies, everything I promised you at the beginning. See, I can do this tip thing, this number tip thing, this top 10 tip thing. It's easy. Save time too, right? This is a lot shorter than my most of my episodes, right? Right? It's not. Told you it wouldn't work. But come on, chock full of tips. So remember, whether you're hiking the Frances, the Norte, the Portuguese, the Primitivo, you're hiking Santiago de Muxia, or maybe you're going to Finster, or maybe you're doing bulk, maybe you're doing another hike all together. Happy feet are dry feet, and dry feet, no, let's see. Dry feet are happy feet, and happy feet make for happy pilgrims. Be a happy pilgrim, I totally just made that up. Did I make that up? If someone else said that. I might have stolen that. But you know what I'm getting at? I'm getting at... Oh, it's been so long. It's been so long. Come on, come on,